What's interesting about the biggest games of 2023 is that many of them were approached with apprehension. Could a remake of Resident Evil 4 really work? Was taking turn-based battles out of Final Fantasy 16 a good idea? And isn't Tears of the Kingdom just Breath of the Wild again? And yet all these games were hugely successful in their own right. But there have been as many, or in fact more games, that had our interest that totally dropped the ball in some form or another. And some of these titles might still be worth playing, but they weren't the home runs they needed to be or that we were hoping for. So with that being said, I'm Sai for WhatCulture.com and these are the 10 most disappointing video games of 2023 so far. Number 10, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Performance issues are the order of the day and have been for some time in gaming and there seems to be no end in sight. And here's the thing, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is a good game. In fact, some people absolutely love it and they're quite right to. It offers plenty of gameplay variation and the visuals give a stunning look into the galaxy far, far away. A worthy sequel that goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with 2019's Fallen Order. That doesn't mean, however, that it didn't immediately set everyone's teeth on edge thanks to the industry standard of awful optimization issues. Whilst Metacritic is a poor place to look for user scores these days, Jedi Survivor's negative reviews definitely paint quite the picture as many players felt horribly let down by the game's performance woes. Screen tearing and an inconsistent frame rate were pretty much an issue on every system, but PC players had it worse with all manner of freezes and shader stuttering. Poor optimization options left players without any way of trying to correct the problems themselves. Updates have since been issued, but what's incredibly damning is that these same troubles were present in Fallen Order and never truly fixed. Hence, angry fans that say, enough is enough, you know, until next time. Number 9, AEW Fight Forever. For the non-wrestling fans, it's worth noting that All Elite Wrestling exists in an attempt to be an alternative alternative do WWE. As such, it's a really good call to make their first foray into video gaming a far cry from the hyper-real 2K sports sim series. More than this, with its arcade style and punchy pace, AEW Fight Forever is a callback to the beloved WWF No Mercy on the N64. But by hearkening back to the past, Fight Forever features the same issues. Finicky systems and clunky gameplay detract from the experience and the character creation suite is more bare bones than a skinny dipping skeleton. This lack of content continues in a dispirit low number of modes and possible match types. AEW's roster is stacked, so there was always going to be cuts, and DLC is on the way to address this, but not featuring tag team legends The Acclaimed, who everybody loves, or women's champion Jamie Hayter at launch is a strange choice. The general consensus seems to be that at least Fight Forever is a breath of fresh air in the wrestling video game space, and it's certainly showing potential for the future. However, it's not the definitive squash match victory that many were hoping for. Better luck in the rematch. Number 8, Blood Bowl 3. For those that need a primer, Blood Bowl is an absolutely gonzo sport from the world of Warhammer. Think NFL, but replace all of the rules with maximum violence and all of the players with orcs and elves. Previous Blood Bowl video game adaptations have tended to be warmly received, which unfortunately leads us to Blood Bowl 3. After waiting since 2015's game, players largely agree that the most recent release is a vapid and vain attempt to rake in some cash. Gameplay-wise, it feels like a big step back from Blood Bowl 2 with its messy UI and disappointing level of content. Character animations and options are limited and at launch several key features in the matchmaking had been removed. Whilst the game continues to be updated there's only so much alleviating that Cyanide Studio can do. More than this of course the game is mired by the greed of Warhammer Overlords Games Workshop. Players can spend money to upgrade each player on their team meaning the demand for additional cash to be sunk into the title is high if you want to stand a chance competing against fully outfitted squads. And when the game already feels half-assed, well it's no wonder that the concurrent PC player base has dropped down to less than 200 people for most of the year so far. Number 7, Atomic Heart. When it comes to first-person action-adventure titles that marry intense gunplay, stealth, RPG mechanics, and most importantly heavy storytelling, then it's hard not to think of Bioshock. And considering how great that game was, it's really not surprising that even 15 years later studios are still trying to ape the style. Atomic Heart is one such game that wears that inspiration on its sleeve. Unfortunately, it sort of stumbles around in the shadow of Bioshock and its ilk never quite achieving greatness of its own. Which is odd because the setting and themes of the game seem prime for the pickings. Taking place in an alternate history where Soviet Russia has developed advanced robotics, there's a lot to explore that the game simply doesn't. Instead, it opts to try to be cool in a way that appeals to players aged 17 and below. The story is a dozen hours of grizzled swearing and overly sexualized item dispensary post box, just in some lifeless melee combat, a bad UI and overworld map, and a protagonist who keeps saying the words crispy critters so many times that they lose all meaning if they ever really had meaning to begin with, and Atomic Heart is a forgettable mess of a game. Number 
Number 6, Forspoken. There was certainly some level of open-mindedness to Forspoken before release as it was a brand new IP from Square Enix. In fact, it was specifically worked on by Luminous Productions, the developers behind Final Fantasy XV. Additionally, it was a statement of intent as PlayStation's first tentpole title of the year. And in all fairness, whilst the game does start off slow, it does so strongly. Forspoken's combination of telekinetic magic powers for combat and parkour for movement is interesting and fluid. However, it all starts to wear pretty thin. The game's battles become monotonous in short order and as good as it feels to explore it, using phrase traversal options, the open world's emptiness is hard to avoid. Forspoken's story and writing came under fire as well as the sassy, Marvel-like quick wit of protagonist phrase dialogue was divisive, at least, and memed into oblivion. The game sold poorly, making it pretty clear that this hopeful new Square universe was going to be a one-and-done situation, despite its multiple endings all having some degree of cliffhanger. More than this, Luminous Studios were very quickly folded back into Square Enix upon release. Number 5, Fire Emblem Engage. Releasing way back on January 20th, Fire Emblem Engage was the year's first big disappointment. Actually, worse than this, it was an unexpected stumbling block in a franchise that had quickly been growing into one of Nintendo's most respected. It's worth saying at least that whilst developers' intelligent systems find themselves on this list, Fire Emblem Engage overall reviewed well and most players enjoyed its further refinement of the turn-based strategy battling system. However, there were a lot of things that really weren't what fans were hoping for. Whereas the storyline in 2019's Fire Emblem Three Houses was given no shortage of praise, Engage manages to be paper thin and an incoherent mess all at once. It uses tired tropes aplenty and the game seems to be a pretty basic Fire Emblem game stapled together with fan service rather than actually doing anything to move the series forward. Where Three Houses had a great setting, Engages is forgettable. The emblems, returning characters from the franchise in the form of magical summons, overshadow the core cast. It wasn't an outright disaster by any stretch, but certainly a misstep which guarantees the game will be seen as a superfluous entry in the franchise in the decades to come. Number 4, Redfall. It's hard to deny that Xbox needs more exclusives. Whilst Game Pass is a tempting package, it's low on truly must-have titles. Redfall, the vampire-slaying open-world team-based shooter, could have really carried the burden this spring. After all, it was the new IP from the highly respected Dishonored developers Arcane. Any looter shooter has the danger of becoming bland and repetitive if players don't feel rewarded or inspired to keep moving, and Redfall fell at this very crucial hurdle. After all, you can play with friends online, but you have to start again if you want to play solo. That's not great news considering the story is dreary to match its two equally dull open worlds. Whilst the juggling act of gunplay and psychic powers feels good at first, the luster is lost thanks to atrocious enemy AI. It's hard to feel threatened by vampires when they can't find their way around the map to get you or can't hit you when you're standing still. That being said, the ones who glide along the floor or through the air are a little creepy, but that's probably not what Arcane was going for. The industry is suffering with too many broken games rushed out the door to be patched later, but Red was so bad that Xbox head Phil Spencer felt the need to personally apologise for it. Number 3, The Last Case of Benedict Fox Taking a break from AAA disasters, The Last Case of Benedict Fox seemed like a fun addition to Xbox Game Pass. This Lovecraft-inspired Metroidvania with its rich and brooding art style and promise of a mystery to be solved was repeatedly featured in Xbox showcases and was due to arrive on Game Pass on day one. However, its release came and went without Microsoft making any appropriate fanfare, like they knew they had a dud on their hands. Benedict Fox ticks almost every box on the great checklist of gaming issues. The game's real mystery is what the story is even really about as it poorly explains itself. On the gameplay front, the combat and exploration both feel tired and boring. To make matters worse, the game launched with a host of performance issues on both PC and console, with the clunky controls made even more uncomfortable with frame rate stuttering and crashes. And most frustrating of all, Benedict Fox had bugs on launch that completely broke progression. There were instances of items disappearing from players' inventories, correct puzzle solutions not actually granting progress, and rooms that could softlock a player completely. The last case of Benedict Fox by name and probably by nature, as this game's abject failure could spell disaster for Polish developer Plot Twist. Number 2, The Last of Us Part 1 for PC. Whether or not you think that The Last of Us needed a remake at all, there was a certain degree of excitement from non-PlayStation owners. Part 1 would be the first time PC game would finally get to see what all the hype was about. To this point, The Last of Us was a series that Sony had worked hard to maintain an air of artistic integrity on over the years, and Naughty Dog were known for their high bar of quality. This is why the utterly broken PC release was so shocking, and also hilarious.
hilarious. Steam Deck Joel, as he became known, gave us a new look at the post-apocalyptic survivor that could haunt your dreams if it wasn't so funny. With patches of different coloured straw for hair and eyebrows that looked like nesting horned devil caterpillars, Twitter exploded with videos of all manner of glitches. Character models would bend and snap into place and in especially odd instances, randomly get soaked through in cutscenes that take place nowhere near a body of water. It was so hysterical for the wider gaming audience that for a moment it was easy to forget that this footage was likely captured by PC players who might never have experienced the game before. This was not the award-winning title they had been curious to play for a decade. And number one, The Lord of the Rings Gollum. Video game delays can be a blessing or a curse. Sometimes a long delayed game can be worth the wait. Other times a long gestation period results in something that only a mother can love. Which seems somewhat appropriate considering the odd choice to take the fantastical setting of Middle Earth and develop a game based on its most wretched character in Lord of the Ring Gollum. From early looks, the game probably needed a lengthy delay. So whilst it was initially hard to be too excited about Gollum, it was at least an unexpected return to the Lord of the Rings world. Perhaps it could surprise us all. After all, it had been nearly a decade since the last non-Lego game set in J.R.R. Tolkien's world. But it goes without saying at this point that the only surprise that Lord of the Rings Gollum mustered was the depths that it could sink to. It's been rightfully pegged as the worst game so far this year, thanks in part to just how horribly ugly it is. In fact, Gollum's character model is worse in the final build than pre-release material, and the UI looks like it was made in about an hour. More than this, the entire engine the game runs on feels like a house of cards that could fall down at slightest provocation. Crashes, broken geometry, bad camera, you name it. High definition games having trouble running could almost be excusable, but Gollum was ugly and busted. Back into your cave, Smeagol, and don't come out until you figure out basic pathfinding. Okay, we're all a little down now after talking about these disappointing games, so let's bring the mood up with this video, 10 video game mechanics that should have sucked and yet didn't. Leave a comment down below what's your most disappointing video game experience so far this year. Like this video and subscribe, and of course head to whatculture.com for more content every day. I've been Cy for WhatCulture, and have a good week.